Hello and what is up G3 family? Welcome, welcome. It is good to see each and every one of you here today celebrating the heist launch. Guys, did you hear? October 6, 2020 is when heist is launching. For those of you who would like your build looked at, you can always send us a uh, POB in Discord and let us know what you want us to improve on. Don't I have like a challenge to kill one of these guys? Who is this? GR8BO. Who is that? It's a big dog. Okay, so I've got to I've got to kill a big dog. I got to find the big dog. Is it is it in the tunnels? Is the tunnels the right one for where it's at? Oh, there he is, great boy. See, we just defeated him. We just that was a guy. Look at this. There, there was a guy. He, he was right here. Did you guys see him? <laughs> I thought we took him down. Did it say great boy? I don't know. Oh no, Great Boy is very great. Okay, so that that wasn't him. I could have sworn it had the, the maybe it's just another guy with letters and numbers. I thought it was a dog. Could have sworn it was a dog. I never told my kids this. <laughs> Vindari. Oh, he's great. I love crime. I just love doing a good crime. Oh, Vindari, I can see why you didn't tell your kids. Up here and up here. Okay. Oh, there he is. Holy moly. Speaking of big dog. That is a great boy. Oh my gosh. Can I summon that guy? I want to specter that guy. <laughs> Let me specter that guy. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's a big dog. I need to do a better job of touching small chests on my way to the objective. Because I really feel like my... I enjoy my sandwich. And I enjoy eating it. Hello and welcome to Heist League. Where we watch Iron eat his sandwich. Not gonna get frustrated. I'm enjoying the opening weekend of Heist League. BRB getting sandwich. Good idea, Redeem. Good idea. Sandwiches are good. If I take a bite from my sandwich, I won't say all the nasty things I'm thinking. Redempt says, I don't particularly want to see you fail or succeed. I just want to see you enjoying POE. Hey, there you go. That's right. This is our hobby time. This is our time without our work, without our other responsibilities. Let's just enjoy it. I think... All right, somebody somebody can feel free to get ready to clip this. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on a rant just for a moment. We'll, we'll see if I die here in a level 77 zone while I'm, while I'm ranting. I'm probably going to die. I feel like that's what's what's some of the bummer to me about a league when any league uh, doesn't perform well, right? Is that it's a, ultimately it's a hobby, and so I'm spending my free time to do it. It's not it's not about the cost of the hobby, etc. In terms of finances, it's about the cost in terms of time. So, for instance, when I play Path of Exile Heist and I have crashes. I can choose to go fishing with my kids as a hobby instead, right? Instead of playing Path of Exile, I could choose to do that. When I'm fishing, I don't have to worry about crashing. I might not catch any fish, but I can still go have a great time outdoors with my kids, right? I'm just using this as an example of another hobby. When I'm reading a book and enjoying a book, I don't have to worry that a page is randomly not going to be there in the book to disrupt the flow and my enjoyment of that book. I guess it's possible, right? There are misprints, there are problems that do happen. But for the most part, for the most part, when you're enjoying a hobby, part of the reason why you're attracted to that hobby is precisely because of its consistency uh, and your enjoyment of it when you've got time to enjoy it. Its ability to pick down, put up, uh, pick, pick up and put down 
whenever it is that you're looking to, to enjoy it. And when a video game, I'm not talking about Path of Exile alone here, I'm talking about video games in general. When a video game does not deliver as a hobby, when it's crashes and it's got problems, I remember Wilson, I remember the opening weekend on Wilson. I had a great time playing Wilson on the opening weekend, but that was because I wasn't playing online. Anybody who was trying to play online with their friends basically couldn't play. They basically couldn't play for the entire opening weekend of Wilson. Right, that's that's just an example. Um, today is early release day, you know, for for early access day for Baldur's Gate. I'm probably going to get it, but I'm not playing it yet today, just because I wanted to play Heist, because today was the release of Heist League. <laughs> today was the first day Heist, Heist League was out, actually out as it was uh, originally designed, and, and hopefully in its best iteration now. At least for balding geriatric old men like me. Hobby time is your time where you can step back, enjoy some quiet... Um, away from other responsibilities and, and, and just enjoy something that you enjoy. So in a video game setting, when you're not allowed to enjoy those things, when something doesn't function, when it doesn't work, that's really, really depressing. Because that's your hobby time. That's, that's your time to get recharged. It's your time away from other junk. So it's not even just that it's a disappointment with any in particular game when it's not working. But it's also like this defeated moment where you're like, okay, now the thing that I was excited to do while I was away from all of my other responsibilities, that thing is no longer available to me. We're trying to run as many heists as we can and enjoying the fun that comes along the way. We are leveling somewhat slowly. Somewhat slowly. That's mostly because your favorite balding, awkward, geriatric guy. Oh my gosh. What are we up to? What count is that? We're leveling slowly, mostly because we're crashing, actually. I was going to blame it on me. I was going to say, you know what? It's because this old bald guy is, you know, going too slow. See, if I, if I go kick around the soccer ball with my eight-year-old, I don't have to wor worry about, oh, is the soccer ball going to deflate all of a sudden randomly? I guess it could. But something preventing us from enjoying our hobby time together. It's really frustrating. It's tough to get into a flow. There's so much, so much literature out there about gamers and flow and how important it is to keep gamers in a state of flow in order to keep them engaged in their game. Crashing just kills flow, man. Absolutely kills it. She says, 10 act story campaign without the skill tree for 111 subs. No passive tree, just items? That's pretty spooky. I don't think I could level that to 90. Like, I, I think that's outside of my ability to do. Especially since leveling doesn't give you more power. Like, leveling just unlocks different, like, new gear slots for you to hit. It would mean no ascendancy as well. I'll wait with you. Be gone, foul Dwimmer Lake. You will not touch him. Thou fool. No living man can hinder me. And no living man am I. Is there a bigger, like, is there just a bigger, badder hero throughout all of Lord of the Rings than Eowyn? And what Eowyn turns out to be? Like, Gandalf can't take down the Witch King. Aragorn can't take down the Witch King. Legolas and Gimli, together as a team, they can't take down the Witch King. Theoden, this this ancient this king from you know, from olden days, who's who's lived and fought many battles, he gets wrecked by the Witch King. Eowyn takes down the Witch King, pretty pretty badass, pretty badass. Maybe a shy, a sire of shards build. Okay, that'd be fun. She says, that's only with the 10x story campaign. Okay, so only 10x story campaign and only items. No passive tree. See, I don't know though. Still, your HP is only going to, like, you'd have to go, you can't even go with an evasion build, right? You're not going to scale up any evasion. But, <laughs> like, your HP is only going to be what's flat on your build. 
I don't know, man. That it still sounds like a tall task. But yes, feel feel free to laugh and chat if you need to. I enjoy I enjoy writing stories for my kids. It's one of my it's one of my fun things that I like to do. Usually they're fantasy stories. Usually, sometimes they're not. But most often they're they're mythological in nature. I just did one on uh, the origin of where shooting stars come from. And uh, I did another one during COVID about uh, during our lockdown here in the United States. I did one about the origin of deceit. Where is it that lying comes from? So just simple, simple, relatively short stories, like two to three pages. Mythological stuff that can help both both engage my kids' imaginations, but also eventually put them to sleep because I read them to them at night right before they go to bed. So it can't be too gruesome. It can't be too horrific. Cooking with iron? Yeah, we could do a cooking with iron challenge if you want. If you want to... Hello. Hello, what is up, G3 fam? My name is G3 Iron, and this right here today, we're going to teach you how to make a uh, half-eaten ham sandwich. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take two slices of bread. Make sure you put plenty of mayo and mustard on your ham sandwich. Make sure you put at least three slices of ham. The reason why you want three slices of ham on your uh, ham sandwich is because if you only put one slice of ham on each side of uh, of the bread, oftentimes what will happen is you'll take a bite and sometimes maybe you'll accidentally, like, you're, you'll essentially bite down into the sandwich and you'll only grab that bottom or that top layer of the ham on the sandwich. And this is why for max efficiency, you want to apply your mustard and your mayonnaise onto both sides of the sandwich. If you only apply it to one side of the sandwich, when you bite into those two slices of ham, you're gonna pull down and you're gonna just growl out the ham and then you're just eating ham. You're not eating a ham sandwich. So you wanna apply your mustard, your mayonnaise on both sides of the bread. Then you wanna apply at least three slices of ham. Again, one on each side and then one in the middle and an additional layer to the cheese. Now. The cheese is incredibly important to make sure that you get it on the sandwich because oftentimes if you put the cheese in between the two pieces of ham, then what'll happen is the cheese is just sitting there. It's floating. It's in no man's land. It doesn't really have a spot to go or a spot to call home. And so you want to make sure that that cheese is applied to one side of the bread. On that side of the bread, typically that's where you put your two slices of ham and then you put your one slice of ham on the other side of the bread. Then when you assemble it, you put it together. You get you got lots of options once you've assembled the sandwich. Some people like a slice down the middle. Some like a, a nice diagonal slice in order to make triangles. That's particularly what I'm a fan of. Some players, or rather some eaters, <laughs> imagine talking about players while eating food. Some eaters enjoy to make their uh, their quarter slice sandwich, which is what my uh, my oldest son likes to do. Anyway, that's uh, that's been cooking a sandwich with E3 Iron. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope today is the day that a basket of mayonnaise drops on you. <laughs> oh man, is that what you guys want? You, you guys, you guys want a want a cooking with iron segment? Oh man, <laughs> you guys are all way too silly, way too silly. Says the man who just did a a thirty second spot for a ham sandwich. <laughs> what? Why was I not hitting that? How, how am I? Guys, how am I not hitting this guy? Guys? Guys? Is he stealing my mana? What's going on here? He's just a bugged out and vulnerable minion. Do you guys see this? He's, he's gonna chase me forever. What if this was hardcore and that's the that's the that's the monster that killed you? He's not actually there. He can't be. Is he actually doing damage to me? I just have a pet. I've acquired a new pet. <laughs> That's what's happened. I've just acquired a new pet, guys. We're going to have so many people who say, Oh, but Iron, X, Y, and Z, Redemption Sentries are terrible. You should just use these other Spectres. And okay. Sometimes people do choose things in Path of Exile due to flavor. Like other than just min-maxing. Yeah, it is possible. Redemption sentries are totally still playable. You can still use them. Oh no, they can't kill Uber Elder in like two shots. Oh no, they're unplayable. I mean, the, the, the average player doesn't ever even see Uber Elder. 
right? So for the average player who's just wondering, hey, how do I play Spectres and what are some good options for Spectres? Some players genu genuinely pick things because they like the way how it looks or they like the way how it feels. I mean, how else do you ex describe that some people choose to play other action RPGs other than PoE right now? Right? Because if you're just going for a min-max PoE, or a min-max action RPG, PoE is going to be the finest, the best. But the reason why some people play other action RPGs, those games will go nameless, at least by me, it's because people like graphics, some people like better performance or consistency, some people like not having new content come out all the time, some people just want the same thing um, over and over and over again. Some people like that. Like, I, I mean, I mean, legitimately unintelligent. Some Spectres, they might have great skills, but they'll be hanging out over here, like, behind a, behind a wall while they're shooting their projectiles. It's like, what are you doing? The enemies are out here. I'm out here. I death marked something out here. Meanwhile, they're over here going, Yeah, boss, I'm helping. No, you're not. You're not doing anything. You're shooting the wall. So then you got to convoke them and call them over. And then there are other Spectres that are fantastic. Their AI is fantastic, but maybe their damage is atrocious. It's like, man, those, those Spectres, they're always on top of the enemy. But they don't do anything. They don't do any damage. Then you've got Utility Spectres. You've got They of Tall. You've got Undying Evangelist to give you the proximity shield. There's, there's almost always one Reddit post per league of people complaining about proximity shields. And, of course, allies cannot die. And with proximity shields, at least, you can replicate that. Like, if you want to be the one running around with the proximity shield, you can do that. Some players on Hardcore use Undying Evangelists as their Spectres. Sometimes they use it in non-Spectre builds. Like, not everybody is all about that min-max life. Like, not everybody wants to boot up YouTube. Like, I'll, I'll say it, right? Some of some of my frustrations with Heist League, not, not with Heist League as released presently, because we all know today was the actual release date for Heist League. But with the, the pre-release Heist League that came out, you know, September 18th, some of my problem with experiencing Heist League the last couple of weeks has been that every day has felt like patch day. And I said that last night on, on uh, during a Discord conversation that we were having on our on our Path of Exile Discord for G3 stuff. I just said, look, I, I don't I can't I can't keep up with this. It feels like every day is patch day. And I can't keep up with it. I cannot read patch notes. I got four kids. I got other work that I gotta do. My hobby time, I wanna be my hobby time. There's plenty of games that I would like to get to. I still have 15 more games on our 30 for 30 list that I'd like to get to. There's new games that are coming out that I'd like to get to and play. There's plenty of stuff competing for my free time, as well as stuff competing for my responsible time. I have a hard time playing something when every single time I'm playing it, I have to have a new update that I go through and, and learn about. That's just me. The, the game company, Grinding Gear, Grinding Gear Games, doesn't need to, to cater to me. They don't need to change anything because of me. I'm not saying they, they need to stop what they're doing. But I'm saying for me personally, that has worn down some of my patience with this league. Not that GGG isn't committed to making a great league and they're constantly changing it and constantly trying to improve it. But rather, it has grinded on me that almost every day, it feels like, since Heist has been released, there's been a new patch or a new hotfix or a new update that's coming that's adding content. It's like, okay what other new thing did I think I knew about prior to Heist even being launched that now is is not true or is being added to is being added to the concoction that is Heist yeah I I don't know I don't know on that front that's 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 a good point right for a lot of players PoE is daunting this is why a lot of us you know, when we've tried to introduce the game to other friends, they haven't necessarily received Path of Exile very well. Because it can be a pretty daunting game. There's a lot going on. There's a lot to soak in. And so it's not for everybody in that regard. Right? We slaughter you! Is Einhar actually an orc from Mordor? Is that actually what he is? He's just like a happy orc from Mordor? You know what would be a fun fanfiction to read? Is if somebody tried to do a fanfic from like a orc's perspective. That'd be kind of fun. You know, he's, he's just he's just a hard-working middle-class orc. You know? He's got a couple of orclings at home that he's got to, you know, he's got he's got to put food on the table for. He's got an orc wife that's always getting on his back about coming home late from the bar. Or late from the raid. With, you know, the, the orc raiders. 
you know. Oh, Gothmog. Why is it that you're home again late? That's three nights in a row. I know. Sauron's being really hard on us right now, though. He's got this War of the Ring that's, you know, it's got a five-year business plan, and we really got to get into shape. We got to march all day and all night. Okay, well, your son, Rithrak and Smick Smack, they haven't seen you all week. I know, I know, I feel bad. Maybe I can bring him on one of the raids. You want to take him on one of the raids into Gondor? I know, it, it doesn't sound like a great idea, but... You know, maybe it would give us a chance to bond, and they can meet some of the guys, like Sergeant Goth Gothrog and, and Femur Beamer. <laughs> Ezomir is Mordor confirmed? Yeah, maybe. Slice of Life Orc Drama? What would it be called? What would the title of, like, a, a sitcom in Mordor be called? Oh, that's a rare guy. That's a big boy. Oh, we did it! We made it to level 85. Oh, am I bleeding? Woo, that was close. Did you see that? Oh, man, that was close. Beyond the Eye is what it would be called? <laughs> that's fantastic. Oh, that's 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 a perfect name for it. You're absolutely right, Kingspade. That's a perfect name for it. Beyond the Eye. A tale of of just a, a, a humble orc family in Mordor trying to, to rub two sticks together and make it by. The middle class life of orcs in Mordor. <laughs> beyond, beyond the eye. Two and a half orcs? Oh, that's a good name. <laughs> oh, two and a half orcs. That'd be a good one. You could just name it after one of the characters, right? It could just be the Gothmog Show. <laughs> Me is on the menu. A tale of becoming a chief <laughs> or a chef. There you go. Me is on the menu. Hello there, I'm Gothmog. I'm going to teach you how to eat raw meat tonight. Looks like meat is back on the menu, boys. That would be that would be a signature statement. <laughs> Today we're going to be grilling out back. Who doesn't love a good get together? After all, we all love to go on a good raid, capture a couple hundred different uh, humans, and then cook them up. Who doesn't love that? <laughs> oh man. I would say this was a pretty good day. So we made it from what? 78 to 85 is what we made it from on Melee Draconis. So we are five levels away from hitting level 90 on this character. Woo! I don't know how we're going to do it. I don't know how we've made it this far. Well, thanks to Torsine, the Fallen's Build, and thanks to all of you for being such fun and delightful company to hang out with. That's how we've made it this far. But I do think I might have to throw some currency. Might have to throw some currency into some more items to actually upgrade this build. But we'll find out more about that next time. So the plan is no stream tomorrow. Uh, I've got some stuff that I got to do with the family uh, for doctor's appointments and those sorts of things. But again, everybody's okay. So no worries there. Uh, just some standard doctor's appointments. And then uh, hopefully we will be back Thursday streaming either Baldur's Gate or more Heist League. Now that Heist League is actually released and we'll be playing more on our melee poison pathfinder using claws and prolifing everything that we can run into. Anyway, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks so much to everybody who has subscribed. Thanks so much to Viper, who has uh, been generous and pushed us over the hump that we have now reached our next sub goal. So we'll have to think about what we want our next, next sub goal uh, to be after that. Anyway, thanks so much for joining us today. And I hope today is the day that Amir of Calandra drops for you. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.